We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids otherwise would be consuming only through textbooks and TV. After a few weeks back east of the Pacific, we've crossed the Atlantic to experience the world-famous European Christmas markets and a few weeks of adventures along the way. Today, we're back in Florence, Italy, and we're meeting our past guide and current friend, Silvia Ponticelli to give her a tour of our 600-year-old palazzo on the Arno River and for her to walk us through the history of Florentine fashion. Florence was named the most beautiful city in the world by Forbes magazine. We're going to show you why. Yes, beautiful to see you again. Buongiorno. You were kind of... Come va? I love this place. It just feels like a museum. Like it's it, a, it is, actually, yes. Like a book museum. <laughs> it's like a private library, eh? yeah? Yeah. Must be tens of thousands of books. But yeah, yes. this was probably originally the old kitchen. Really? You see, because yeah. people used to place kitchens all the way up in order to avoid the fire. Uh -huh. Because the fire is going up, uh -huh. so the people will have enough time to escape. So yes, this was just so one person's home, the whole building? A, a family. A family. A family home. Most of these buildings around here, they are not as, uh, as old as this. This is one of the oldest along the river Arno. As you can tell, those are bigger, wider, and uh, they are dating back to the mostly 17 and 1800s. Uh, and how old do you think this building is? Oh, this is for sure uh, at least uh, 1400. Yeah, that, that book over there says yeah. 600 and years. The, wow. I mean, then there are several periods. I mean, probably the back side is older, uh -huh. the front side is a little bit younger. I see. Yeah, <laughs> so much history here. It's so much history. Yeah. <laughs> Want a quick tour of the rest of the place? Yeah, we'll show you yeah. the bathroom. Yeah, show me. Oh, this is where Brooklyn is staying down here. So she has her own full bathroom. This is a princess. A princess. And then she has a very messy bedroom. <laughs> Well, princesses are messy. Princesses are messy. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah, isn't that nice? Wardrobe. Oh, the ceilings. So this actually is a balcony over here, and it goes across to the master. So you, you see, these used to be medieval towers. Really? Wow. Well, in the Middle Ages, the tone of the tower, the riches, the family. And Colt's really excited about this part of the palazzo. Yes. He has his right place. Yeah, this is like his own little apartment up here. Oh, Madonna. Mamma mia. Eh? Yeah, I love how it's like a little living room separate yes. from the bedroom. And then he has a bathroom down here. There's a nice modern shower around the corner. Big, huh? Yeah. All right, this is the coolest thing about this place. I think you're going to love it. <laughs> it takes just a second, though. Oh. Of course I love this. Yeah. <laughs> How can you <laughs> say no? I know. Um, and now is that uh, Uffizi, the tower with the clock? No, 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 no that's no, no. Palazzo Vecchio. Yes. That actually became uh, the second house, the second residence of the Medici. Ah, uh -huh. And this is uh, like a nickname because the uh, vacuum is old, so they became the old residence of the Medici once they moved uh, down there, I mean, in the Pitti Palace. So let's see if we can see the Pitti Ooh. Palace. You see this uh, yeah. long uh, kind of a residence? Yeah. 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 Yes, and right. they walked along the, the Ponte Vecchio oh, huh? <laughs> to go from their house to their uh, offices, Uffizi. And talking about bell towers, this is also yeah. very Oh, I didn't even see it. This is the Santo Spirito Church, the Holy Spirit Church. And this is where Michelangelo dissected the bodies. Yeah, the corpses to know the anatomy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Fascinating. Wow. What a, what a beautiful one. We still have to show her the master. Actually, kitchen first. Yeah, the kitchen is pretty small, but it seems like that's pretty typical for yeah. Europe and Italy and just this bridge here. What do you mean just? This is huge for us. <laughs> <laughs> just? What? Wow, in the US, kitchens are the like, entire first floor. Now you understand why we really don't have all these eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't have the dryers. Huh? Yeah, but this yeah. is a very, very, very... A uh, sophisticated and luxurious kitchen. And this is the master. We love this room. Ooh. Oh, and they decorated it so perfectly. 
We made our bed. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Did yes. you didn't sleep on the sofa? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a lot of uh, important people watching over you, huh? Yeah. So you know these people? Some, yes. Yeah. Guido Reni was a very important uh, painter. Yep, and it has lots of modernness to it. So they put the vanity, the sinks, over here, and it kind of feels like it's like open in the hallway. Yeah. So is that like typical? Well, uh, you have to do what, uh, how you, I mean, the, the building talks. You have to work with the, yeah. yes, you have yeah. to work with it, no? <laughs> And this is yeah, really and then we have our modern shower. And so the last time we were out here, we did two tours with you. We did Tasty Gems of Florence, which was like the food tour local yeah. thing. And then you took us around Uffizi Gallery, and we saw Il Duomo. See? That was a classic walking tour. Classic walking tour. Yeah. But I know another one of your cultural uh, passions here in Florence is the fashion, fashion world, the fashion yeah. industry, yeah. right? Yeah. I would think about more the history of fashion. So, of course, uh, everything we have in Florence goes back to tradition. You want to walk around a bit? Yes, Point let's go. Let's All go. Right. So, Sylvie, last time we were out here, it was still mask mandate. Even outside, most people were still wearing masks. Have you noticed a big uptick in business? Are you a lot busier now that thing, tr like tourism travel is kind of back to normal? Yes, we are. We have been busier. I mean, the summer has been fantastic. But honestly, I still prefer this period of the year. Yeah. I know, I, it's much more authentic. Everything is open. The city welcomes everybody. Summer and winter, exactly the same way, but uh -huh. you have uh, the, the people, I mean, the, the real people, the citizens, uh, and I think everything is easier. I mean, you can go everywhere you like. Sylvia is telling us that our palazzo is right next to the Ferragamo family building. And uh, do they still live there now? Is it still occupied by... Uh, but they travel a lot. They yeah, travel they travel a lot. So they have a part of the building that is yeah. used for uh, uh, offices, mm -hmm. and, but they also have some uh, tasting of Brunello because they produce Brunello red wine. Mm, Ferragamo, Silvia was saying, it, it was founded in Florence and still is operating yeah. in Florence today. This is their headquarters. Huh? So this is right where, across the bridge. Yes, this is where the Ferragamo family still has uh, part of their showrooms. Right. We're gonna go inside. Sylvia's gonna show us that they make some shoes in the same way that the original Salvatore Ferragamo made uh, when he first started the business. Gorgeous building, special place. Oh. It's close. Maybe close. we have to walk. We'll have to try Salvatore's again in a bit. For now, I guess we're following Sylvia just across the street. Holy Trinity Church, Santa Trinita. And in this uh, chapel, we are looking to uh, beautiful frescoes dating back to the 1480s, mm -hmm. painted by the Irlandaio family. And uh, what is really interesting is that we can see fashion. It tells us a lot about fashion in the 1400s. The men mostly wore red because it represents power, and then the women wore extravagant, beautiful colors uh, until they turned 40. Then they had to tone it down, wear more black, just to show that they're more devoted to their family than being extravagant and showing off to the world. Colt is a total craftsman. He loves leather work, and when we're at home, he makes his own wallets and leather crafts. And so Sylvia is going to show us where we can buy some Italian leather. Some of the best leather in the world is from Italy. So Colt's really excited to get some of it so he can make Italian leather wallets at home. This is brand leather. Like the samples you were looking at on the table uh, were thicker than this. This is two, two millimeters. The original skin is uh, five, six millimeters. We get to see the workshop. Professional bullet makers have uh, bigger machines than this, and they'll, uh, they do splitting. Like the splitting of the tannery, you uh -huh. can do it with smaller than this. So is this like the only store that has this brand, or is this like a brand you work at, or do you own this brand and there's only like one store here? He <laughs> owns the brand and there's only one store here. Okay. It's a, it's a one of a kind. It's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, one of a kind. Precious small. So do yeah. you have the space for this? The whole thing? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will. In Thank the other you. room, I'll give you some graphic paper. That's pretty cool, huh, buddy? Wow. Probably $200 worth of wallets. What? $200 worth of wallets. 
I'm still so surprised. So we just went into a leather shop. What is it? Like a yeah, like a leather shop. And showed us around, and then he just gave us a massive piece of cow leather with a alligator print embedded into it. And it's like about that long and about that tall. So we're gonna have yeah. to carry this the rest of our trip, but it'll be worth it, right, Cole? Yes. What are you gonna make for the budget? Uh, I'm thinking like six bifold wallets, six trifold wallets, and six inside out wallets. <laughs> six of each wallet that I have templates and measurements for. All right, take two for Salvatore Ferragamo. This is so cool, and I had no idea that shoes were ever sold like this. It's historical and it's artistic. So look here, this shoe is number 88 out of 250. So it's just like a piece of art where they'll show that they've only made so many prints of, and it can be a collector's item. Yeah. And look how beautiful the color. And the style goes yeah. back to the 1930s. 1930s is so when they made the style. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Oh. So it's one of a kind with this type of design, as well as yeah. the Salvatore was the first one using platforms. This is another important design piece. Wow. Where he couldn't find the, the proper leather, uh -huh. he started using other materials, such as this. It's a piece the of a plastic. Light. Yeah. yeah. See? Exactly. So again, this is another piece of art. See yeah. how beautiful this is. I love and it. so modern. And these are some of the celebrities that Ferragamo designed some shoes for. They don't have Marilyn Monroe here, but he designed over 40 pumps just for her. But there's Sophia Loren, Catherine Hepburn, Grace Kelly, and uh, this is the king that abdicated, I can't remember his name, and Wallace Edward. Simpson. Edward? Fascinating. All the history, and it still lives on today. That's, I love that about fashion. You know, there can be trends, but there are some things that are timeless. To say goodbye to Sylvia. We'll see you next time. Oh, we adore you. <laughs> we, we cannot come to Florence without Sylvia and oh, her amazing you. tours. She knows everything. Thank you. Anything you need, I'm here. Huh? <laughs> Ciao. We're gonna try and explore a few things without Sylvia, and then we have to get the kids back for a nap because jet lag. But we want to see a national treasure, something we didn't get to our last visit to Florence. We have to see the David. Michelangelo's original David sculpture was created in 1504 and is displayed in Accademia Gallery here in the heart of Florence. This museum is smaller than the Uffizi Gallery that we toured with Sylvia last time we were in Florence, but it's still a worthwhile collection of famous Renaissance art. There are actually three statues of David here in Florence. This is the third and final one that we've seen. On our very first trip to Florence, we saw the first one, which is at Piazzale Michelangelo. It's on a hill overlooking the city. That's a bronze statue. The second one that we saw is at Piazza Signoria, and that's where this one originally stood, but it was replaced by the replica that's there today. We'd love to spend a few more hours in here, but with jet lag kids, we've got to hit the road. And then after that, we're gonna go to a real Italian treasure and experience the food. We've already done a restaurant tour in Florence, but this place we're gonna show you is so local, the tourists don't know about it. It is off the beaten path down a very small street. It's Trattoria Sestanza. And the owners are a local family. They don't have a website, and it's cash only. So bring those euros. Push. <laughs> it was in English, too. <laughs> Nothing but Italian in here. And the menu, of course, is also only in Italian. What do you want, huh? Tartar. Tartar. I don't see any steak tartar. What about bistecca alla Fiorentina? Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Thank you, promise. When we go to a restaurant in Italy, there are three things we want, and that's olive oil, pasta, and Chianti Classico. For Brooklyn, she only wants one thing: steak. I will take care of the Chianti Classico. Salute. Look how bright green that is. Oh, but Phil says that because of the white balance on the camera, it doesn't look bright green. Oh my gosh. Ripping with heaven. This is the best olive oil you've ever had. The olive oil in Tuscany is like biting into an olive. It is 
just like liquid heaven. It's so delicious and we don't have anything like that. Olive oil that you get in the U.S. at a grocery store, it does not taste like olive oil should taste like. You have to come here. Starting off with a few things already on the table, we have a plate of salami and uh, tortino di cacciati. It's kind of a mix between a quiche and an omelet. There's artichoke heart in the middle of it and it looks like heaven. Uh, they said that this is one of their signature dishes that they're very well known for. Look at that. It like melts apart because there's so much fat marbling in it. This one has uh, fennel. Amazing. This is exactly like a little omelet on the outer edge, but it's like a little nest. It's a... Uh... It's a little bird nest. And the artichoke in the middle, if you were just going based off of sight, looks like it's actually meat, not a vegetable. It's almost like eating a breakfast omelet, but there's something else in the middle here. I think it's just butter. I'm gonna try just the middle. Pretty sure that's butter. A lot of it. Really good. Artichokes are phenomenal. I don't even know if I'd be able to identify that as an artichoke if they didn't tell it. Exactly. If I didn't already know it was artichoke, it's so meaty. I couldn't recognize it. It is delicious. And it is like a buttery omelet with this meaty tasting artichoke. No cheese. No cheese. Wow. The egg is so good. Yeah. That is truly unlike any salami I've ever seen or tasted in my life. Not only is it the tastiest ever, but just you can tell by looking at it, it's the least homogenous salami ever. Like, you just have big chunks of fat and big chunks of meat, and then you've got the uh, little spices in it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's so medium rare. It's as good as Dario's. Oh my gosh, that's like as high of a rating as one can get. I'm gonna try it. We'll see about this. It's delicious. You know why it's as good as Dario's? If you don't know who Dario Cicchini is, he was uh, featured in Netflix, Chef's Table, and he has the most phenomenal cuts of steak because he is a butcher, and it's not about how he cooks it as much as it is how he raises the animal, and the meat is so, so delicious. And that's what I think about this steak is that it's the quality of the meat that is so flavorful. So good. Well, I have my own theory for why Brooklyn likes this as much as Dario's, and that is this is very rare. And what she really liked at Dario's was the tartare, which is completely rare. So it probably reminds you of that, right? Out of the ballpark dinner here. This is our little secret. You can get it from us, but you have got to try this restaurant. You will not regret it. Now we're on to something a little sweeter. And we know it's very cold out, but that doesn't matter. When you're in Italy, you have to have gelato. And this is the best gelato in Italy. A lot of people have told us that. What? In Florence. Ooh, that's so good. Yeah, I'm getting the drink. Um, you think the camera's Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I got cookies and cream. I got tiramisu. I'll tell you, this is delicious. It tastes just like biting into tiramisu. Mm. Well, it has such Italian taste. Well, that was a killer first day here in Florence, and we've got a lot more of Italy, France, Germany, and then back to Italy to go. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing and following us along because we've got some cool adventures that we'd love to have you join us on. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. We are the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn, and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people.